of any program. very much ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the show now I have a very interesting guest star for my program tonight but before I bring him out there's something that I'd like to do you know there's been a lot of publicity about uh, about how long the members of my staff have been associated with me and it's true uh, for instance my writers producers director and my entire crew have been with me so many years that I just like to think of us as one big happy family. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, Norman, would you put camera one on, on camera three, please? Thank you. That fellow there behind the camera, that's Charlie Summers. You see, and he's been with me for about 15 years. And incidentally, he just got married about two days ago. Yeah? Oh, Charlie, Charlie, wave, wave to the people. Go ahead, wave. Don't be wave to the people. <laughs> Come down here. Come down here, Mr. Charlie. Go ahead. Just got married. This is embarrassing. Why? Why shouldn't it be embarrassing? I mean, everybody gets married. You know, I just wanted to wish you and your wife all the happiness in the world. I hope she's watching the show. Oh, uh, she's in the audience. Oh, in the audience. Oh, I thought she was. Where? Where? Right up there. Oh, maybe we can get her down here for a second. Oh, Mrs. Summers, would you come here, please? Uh, uh, Mr. Benny, this is my wife, Selma. Well, Selma, I'm very glad to meet you. And I want to say you got yourself a fine man here. You know, I'm... I'm very, very fond of him. He's, he's been working for me for 15 years. I know. How come you never gave him a raise? <laughs> please. Please, nothing. Let's be honest. You're married now. With what he's paying you, you had trouble living alone. <laughs> but Charlie never complained. Of course he never complained. He's a spineless schnook and you took advantage of him. I took advantage of him? How, how can you say that? I, I've always liked Charlie. I've always told him how important he was to me. Well, why don't you put your money where your mouth is? <laughs> what? And while we're talking, that was some crummy wedding gift you sent us. Two dozen paper plates. <laughs> Selma. This is a marriage, not a picnic. <laughs> Selma, please. Let's face it, you're nothing but a cheapskate, and you ought to be ashamed of the way you treat your help. You ought to be horsewhipped. <laughs> Gee, uh, I'm sorry this happened, Mr. Benny. But, but anyway, thanks for congratulating us. It's all right, Charlie. It's all w right. W would you like to kiss the bride? <laughs> what? Not until I've had my rabies shot. <laughs> well, well, that's a luck, Charlie. <laughs> That's the trouble with women. As soon as you get married, they want you to earn a decent salary. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, to get on with the show, as I said before, uh, tonight I have a very unusual guest. Oh, Don. Don, would you bring out that photograph, please? <laughs> now, would you hold this up to the audience? Oh, and certainly, see? Jack. Now, this is a picture of uh, my guest taken when he was a little boy. And he had something to do with my career back in the days of radio. Now, how many of you remember the feud I carried on with Fred Allen? He almost, 
all of you, but for those of you who don't, Fred and I for years had sort of a, sort of an, a running argument. Oh, Jack, I remember that feud as though it were yesterday. <laughs> Fred, Fred said the funniest things. <laughs> yes, he certainly did. Huh? Oh, Jack, do you remember that great line he had about your being cheap? Well, he said so many. Which one do you mean? Well, he said, uh, I wouldn't say Jack Benny is cheap, but he's the only man I know who would open a can of sardines, eat the fish, use the can for a cigarette case, and have the key made into a button hook. <laughs> said the funniest things. Fred Allen was a great wit. And our whole feud started because of this 10-year-old boy. You see, what happened was one Sunday night, I played the bee on my violin. And the following Wednesday, Fred said he could get a 10-year-old kid to play it better than I did. So he had this little boy here as a guest to prove it. And I must say, this boy played it beautifully. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Of course, since then, this boy has grown up and become a concert violinist. As a matter of fact, he won first prize in the Paganini International Violin Competition, and he's here tonight as my guest, Mr. Stuart Cannon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this was that little boy who started my feud with Fred Allen. Well, Stuart, I must say you've certainly changed. Well, after all, Jack, that picture was taken 28 years ago. <laughs> you know, Stuart, I'll have to admit, when you were on Fred's show that time, you played the violin better than, than I did. Tell me, were you a little worried about it at the time? I sure was. I'd only had three lessons. <laughs> <laughs> well, at 10 years of age, I guess you, you learn fast. <laughs> Being so young at the time, Stuart, you do remember that that started the feud I had with Fred Allen. Yes, but Fred didn't always say insulting things about you. I remember once he said something very nice about you. Nice? Y yes, he said for a man of your wealth, you were really very modest. Modest? Fred said that about me? Yes. He said you could be in a cocktail lounge with Jack Benny all night, and you'd never know he had a quarter. <laughs> well, that's the nicest thing that anyone ever said about me. <laughs> I think. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, getting back to our guest. Stuart Cannon continued his musical studies, and today he is not only a concert artist, but he's professor of violin at Oberlin College Conservatory of Music. Now, Stuart, what are you going to play for us today? I'm going to play La Vida Breve by Manuel de Falla. Oh, yes, yeah, de Falla. Yes, yes I've... Play that several times. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you were very, very good. <laughs> um, now, Stuart, how about... Oh, by the way, what, uh, what is this instrument? What? This is a Stradivarius, Jack. Certainly. Made in 1699. Yeah, it looks like my... I have a Strad, too, you know. It was made in 1724. In fact, both of our instruments were made during what they call his golden years. Jack, do you think our audience knows what we're talking about? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the reason we're discussing the dates of our instruments is because there's quite a difference in Stradivarius violins depending on the period in which they were created. And now, uh, when our violins were made, you see, Stradivarius used to work months and months and months to make sure that every detail was perfect. You see, Antonio Stradivari was a perfectionist. <laughs> a beautiful shape. Such a nice occurs. Thank you, Papa. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to talk about the violin. The violin. The violin. That's all that you think about. That's all you know. What do you talk? I think about you all the time. When are we going to have it, the baby? There's the baby. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> Where was you? You was working on that violin. Well, when Antonio Stradivari, when he make a violin, she's a got to be perfect. Now I have to make a nice polish. Nice a polish. Let's see where are those hummingbird wings. <laughs> How much longer can we go on like this? It takes you so long to make one violin. We have so little to eat. Look at my poor starving brother. <laughs> yeah, he's all a skin and a bone. Three hundred pounds of it. <laughs> if he's so hungry, why not go out to work? He can. He's a stuck in the chair. <laughs> All right, at least he's talking to the chair, at least he's a quiet. Bambini, Bambini, come, sit and eat. I answer, Mama. My dear customer. Antonio Stradivari? That's right. The little old violin maker. Uh, me. <laughs> I ordered a violin nine months ago. Rondelli, that's my name. Rondelli. Oh, come in, come in. Sure. I got you violin. This right here. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Huh. Eh? What do you look? I look for see if your name is in. It's in, it's in. Oh, yeah, I see. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. It's 200 lira. Yeah, mati bien, mati bien. You know, it's worthwhile to wait for a violin with the name Stradivari. Yeah. Oh, uh, grazie, beautiful. grazie. Arrivederci. Uh, grazie. Oh, you do beautiful. Uh, grazie, grazie. Bless you, bless yeah, you. Grazie, bless you, grazie. Grazie, grazie. Your mama. 200 lira. Take a deal. In the month, 200 lira. You gotta work a faster. But if I work a faster, I don't make a good violin. But then, all the all that they want is your name. Now look, you make it a violin, I make it a violin. You put your name Stradivari on both of them. They never know the difference. <laughs> you got a good idea, but a lousy accent. <laughs> good idea. <laughs> 
Come on, a fat. We make a fat. <laughs> Antonio Stradivari. Yes. Here is a two violin. See, you say my name. Antonio Stradivari. That's right. Oh, here you are. 400 lira. Yes. Oh, wonderful, magnificent. Thank you. Antonio Thank you. Stradivari. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Danke schön. Danke schön. You see, Antonio, he got no big difference. No. He only looking for my name. But, Papa, I'm a no like. I'm ashamed. Why? Why are you ashamed? I got feelings. I was so proud when I walked down the street and people point to me and say, that poor fat slob has a husband that makes a wonderful violin. <laughs> <laughs> but what's, what's the difference? We make a two violins, we make a 400 lira. That's all right, Antonio, but we got to work faster. Faster? How much are faster? How fast can you write your name? <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> Wendy, give me back, Mama. I, I forgot to cross a T. <laughs> it's a fast, but we can make a faster. Come on, a faster. Faster than we make a faster. anything but give her a strand. <laughs> then we, we follow that with, with a Stradivarius, a sound of good, like a <laughs> violin of shoe. <laughs> What's only I got a good one? What? Next time, take it to Stradivarius and leave it to Boeing to us. <laughs> That's a good one. Come on. We get in this campaign movie. Come on. We got more. More, sir. Come on. Come on, we have a lot of time, we make it a violin. And we have more, more slogans. More slogans. I got a million, million slogans. Stradivarius is the only polyunsaturated violin. And that's a good. <laughs> the violin, that a snap. She's a crackle, she's a pop. A tippy canoe, and Stradivarius too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all the violins made by Stradivarius were not alike. Isn't that true, Stuart? Yes, Jack, but I doubt that scene you just did was factual. Stuart, we're doing a comedy show. We don't want to be factual. We want to be funny. <laughs> now, how about playing our duet? Ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to play the number that started the feud between Fred Allen and me 28 years ago. The B.
thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's the show. And I want to thank Stuart Cannon for appearing on the program. How about that duet we played? I must admit, in all honesty, that I didn't think... I didn't think a man like Stuart Cannon, a professor of music, a fine artist, would actually appear on a television show and play a duet with me. I guess it proves that teachers really are underpaid. <laughs> well, good night, folks, and I'll be seeing you soon. <laughs>